Good afternoon and welcome to the health edition of, Ch of Chalk TV. I'm Dr. Carl Cabasel. Colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in Canada. More people die from colorectal cancer than both breast and prostate cancer. About 90% of cases are preventable when it's detected early and also curable when detected early. This year alone, more than 21,000 Canadians will be diagnosed with the disease and nearly 9,000 people will die from it. And there's also controversy over the treatment. A Avastin is considered the standard of care for advanced colorectal cancer, but Ontario will not fund the treatment, even though five other provinces do. Well, joining me today to talk about colorectal cancer, prevention, symptoms, and treatment, as well as the controversy, are Dr. Pierre Major from the Hamilton Regional Cancer Centre, John Kalachi, who is a colorectal cancer survivor, and joining us on the phone from Ottawa is Barry Stein, president of the Colorectal Cancer Association of Canada. Welcome all three of you to the show. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let me start with you, um, Dr. Pierre. Just give us a sense, uh, when we talk about colon cancer, what, what are we talking about? Well, as you mentioned, uh, in Ontario alone, there'll be about 8,000 new cases uh, this year of colon cancer, and about 3,300, 3,500 patients will die of it. So it's a quite a lethal disease. Uh, you know, like 40% of the patients will die of the disease because it's often detected late in its course. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the best treatment is when it's early, and that's why we're very pleased about the good news in Ontario, that there's a screening program that's in place with all the infrastructure to support it. Yes. Uh, the bad news is that we don't have access to all the medicines for those patients who unfortunately are diagnosed with the disease at a more advanced stage, where we need all the medicines available to treat their disease, give them as quality, extend their life, good quality life, yeah. and sometimes make the disease that's not amenable to surgery surgically operable to cure them. So we need all the tools to fight this disease. Okay, and ju just to make sure everyone's on the same page, we're talking, when we say the colon, we're talking about the large intestine. Right. Tumor uh, appears in the colon, and when you talk about screening, we're also talking about the fact that you can get a home screening kit, yes, free of charge, uh, to, to catch it early. That's correct. In, in Ontario now, there's a program that started where we'll be looking for blood, small amounts of blood uh, that are present in the stools because tumors tend to bleed, uh, not always in large amounts that you could detect in the toilet bowl, but small amounts in the stool. And these kits, uh, by smearing a bit of stool on the area of cardboard three consecutive days, will allow to detect small amounts of blood in the stool and alert you that something's not right and that your physician can then act on to do more specific tests to determine if you do or have uh, colon cancer. Okay, now John, you're fighting colon cancer as a patient advocate. That's correct. But you also have a personal experience because you're a, a survivor. That's correct. When, when were you diagnosed with colon cancer? I went to my doctor in September of 2004 for rectal bleeding mm -hmm. and um, he said it was just a colonic tear and he sent me home. And about four months later in January of 2005, I was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. Which means it had spread. Exactly. It had metastasized to my liver already. Okay. So I required two operations. So they, they took out, now did they have to take your whole colon out or was it just a part of it? It was a sigmoid resection. So they removed uh, the last foot of colon. Yeah. And they would have stapled the large intestine back to the rectum area. Okay. And that was followed by nine months of uh, intensive uh, chemotherapy. All right, and how about now? Fast forwarding to now, what, uh, what's your treatment now? Well, right now I'm going in every two weeks for chemotherapy. I'm receiving uh, Fulfox 6 and um, a biological drug called Avastin, which I'm uh, paying out of pocket. Okay, and that, that's really one of the issues we're going to be talking about today, is the fact that you have to pay out of pocket. Now, half the country or half the provinces are already covering it for their citizens. That's correct. Um, but not Ontario. What's, what's your understanding, John, of, of why? Well, they're saying there's not enough money to cover the drug, and obviously because I need the drug, it's uh, a concern. However, I need the drug, so I'm forced to pay out of pocket. How much? I, well, it's costing me $5,000 a month, over 5000 5000 a month? Exactly. Wow. Yeah. So and you have a family, you have I a have three home. children, yes. Yeah, so th it's, it's difficult to, to it's balance very difficult. this out, isn't it? Uh, fortunately, I have you know, family and friends that have... Uh, been doing fundraising for me okay and I'm very excited about that so uh, there's a lot of support for me but it's a band-aid solution because there's a lot of other cancer patients in Ontario that require this treatment and uh, some of them are going without the drug because they just can't afford it or even if they can not afford it mm -hmm. they can only use it for some time and then they have to stop it because they don't have the funds okay let's let's bring Barry Stein into the uh, conversation Barry you're the uh, the president of the colorectal cancer Association of Canada correct I am 
And you're also a, um, a cancer survivor yourself. I am. I actually uh, had metastatic disease uh, some, starting some 12 years ago, and uh, it was treated by, primarily by surgery, both in and outside of Canada, and with some chemotherapies. But none of these new biologics that we have to combat the disease were available at the time. Right. Fortunately, right now, I have no evidence of disease, and that is a, a long and hard uh, journey, which uh, I'm very hopeful with the, uh, with the help of uh, John's medical professionals that he'll attain the same, same goal. Certainly, uh, Dr. Major can tell you that there is a subclass of patients who, uh, combined with surgery, having some of the uh, newer biologics and treatments available, um, can actually attain that, uh, that prize at the end of the, of the tunnel. Okay, Barry, uh, John is really, um, a lo he's lucky that he's able to afford it or, or at least make it work so that he can pay for his own treatment. What, um, give us a sense of, you know, how many people out there could benefit from it and are, and are just not getting access to Avastin? Well, that, that's the interesting thing. It's an, and it's not just Avastin. There are other new biologics which are coming down the pipeline for which the province of Ontario is paying for for people to go out of country to receive. So all in all, there are thousands of people, as approximately as you heard from Dr. Major, um, about um, uh, 3,000 odd people uh, in the province of Ontario who uh, will unfortunately die from the disease. But there are also each year about 8,000 people who are diagnosed with the disease, and about half of those likely will have metastatic or disease that has advanced to other organs. Okay. So those people would be of large benefit, uh, would, would receive a large benefit from this. Okay. One of the problems um, that the government is refusing to, to cover the cost is that they say it's not cost effective. But we know that we can prolong lives of those patients by close to two years in some cases and sometimes longer. Okay. And indeed there is that subclass um, of patients that can even go for a cure. Okay. We're really, we want to definitely get into this issue. Quickly though, before we go to break, um, Dr. Pierre, you sort of talked about, or we talked a little bit about the screening tests, but uh, just very briefly, who, who needs to be screened at what age? When does uh, colonoscopy get uh, involved into the picture as well? At the present time, any person, male, female, over the age of 50 should be screened. Screen now is to detect small amounts of blood in the stool. It's supposed to be done every two years. And if you do detect blood in the stool, then the next definitive test to find out what the cause of that bleeding is, is to do a colonoscopy, where you look with a very fine tube throughout the length of the colon to see if there's a polyp or a small tumor that's causing the bleeding. Okay. And of course, if, you, um, if you've had uh, colon cancer at a younger age, or if you have a family member who's had it, yes. you may need to get started sooner. Yes. For yeah. those who have family history, we say 10 years before the index case, the first case in the family. Okay. Well, remember, Talk TV on Health is interactive, and we want to hear from you. So call us now with your questions, comments, and your personal stories. Now, here are the numbers to call. 